Hello everybody, welcome to another one of my in-depth video reviews. Today I'm going to be having a look at the Western Arms Beretta Model 1934. This particular example was bought second-hand from the Zero e and Airsoft forums, very useful for finding some of these older guns. So unfortunately I don't have any original packaging or anything like that, but it's going to be a very interesting gun to look at regardless. So you can see, very unique design. And also a surprisingly small gun. I've just uh, finished uploading my review of the Stark Arms Glock 42. And this one is not quite as small, but for a service pistol, which is what it's meant to be, it is a very small handgun. Now Western Arms has made these for quite a while. I believe they still make a few variants of it in sort of small batches. Western Arms, of course, used to be the gas blowback pistol manufacturer, manufacturer just like Tokyo Marui are nowadays. Uh, nowadays they're much uh, smaller and stick to small batches sort of a few hundred of various guns. But there are a few Beretta 1934 still on their website, so they must be making some of them. Examples like this are up to a decade old, possibly older. Again, they are one of the sort of, not exactly classic airsofts, but one of the older pistol manufacturers. Like I said, this gun was bought used. I can't remember the exact price I paid for it. It wasn't much though, I think it was around £65 or something. Which isn't bad at all. Let's get the magazine out there. Just like I did with the Glock 42, I'll give you a quick uh, idea of how large this thing actually is. And I removed the magazine because it actually adds quite a bit of, uh, obviously, weight and size to it. It's got this large large curve on the bottom there for your uh, for your little finger. I kind of wish they made flat base plates maybe, obviously Beretta never made those uh, that I'm aware of, but um, that would be quite cool because I think the gun looks better actually like that. Anyway, have a look at uh, some similar 9mm short pistols because this one is indeed 9mm short. It says skirt, I'll go into that a little bit later what that actually means. So I've got the Glock 42 which I had a look at earlier. Actually surprisingly similar in size even though this is obviously a concealed carry pistol and this is meant to be a service pistol. Not a massive difference in most most dimensions. It's actually a little bit shorter possibly. But of course compare it to a modern slightly newer pistol of the same caliber you can see a difference. I mean this is a relatively compact pistol. The Beretta M84 Cheetah. If we have a little comparison there, you can see that it is indeed larger than the 1934, especially in width. This is a single stack handgun, or this is a double stack. So yeah, very small. If we compare it to something which is billed as compact, but certainly isn't compact. Sig 229. Pretty chunky handgun. Let's have a look. Look at that. Definitely see the uh, difference there between something that's compact sort of nowadays and something that was apparently a standard issue service pistol all that time ago. It's really interesting that uh, the Italians decided to issue this as their main combat handgun. I think that it would be going up against something like a Browning High Power with a 13 round magazine capacity of more powerful 9mm. Uh, it seems a little inferior to most of the sidearms of World War II but I, I guess it did the job fine because they stuck with it throughout the war. And yeah, it's a very interesting little pistol. Before I forget, I'll talk about the markings here. Like a lot of Western arms, it's got this rather strangely printed, it's not quite engraved properly, it's sort of like it's been stamped but not quite right. Got a, got that little agreement here between uh, Western arms and Beretta, so it's interesting for a Japanese company to actually make an agreement with a gun manufacturer. Normally they just put trademarks on regardless of their legal standing, but um, they've actually got an agreement with Beretta, which I, I assume still stands to today, and it means it's got fully realistic markings, although it has got this annoying little paragraph. It's not such a problem on the bigger guns, but on such a tiny gun, it, it's quite obvious. Anyway, we've got our little uh, Japanese stamp there, ASGK, serial numbers. Got uh, our markings here for the safety, which is a very unique little feature, show you soon. And the important ones, P Beretta, 
caliber 9mm skirt. So you might be wondering uh, about the strange mix of languages we've got on the slide here. So like Brevet is, um, Brevet, whatever, however you meant to say it, is patent in French. Skirt, you might think could be short um, in Italian, but that's quarto. So I, I was a bit confused what skirt was doing on here. I was expecting 9mm quarto, similar to Kurtz in German. Uh, but skirt is actually Romanian. So I did a little bit of research and they've obviously modelled this pistol on the Romanian contract guns. So Beretta produced, or I assume Brits Beretta that was producing them for Romania, who were an Axis power in World War II. They produced about 40,000 of these for, for the Romanian army. And skirt is short in Romanian. I assume so the Romanians didn't get any ammunition mixed up between the 380 and their 9mm guns. So that's quite interesting that Western Arms chose to model it on that. I assume it's all they had available, possibly, to model the gun off. But anyway, had a quick look at markings there. We've got a uh, PB markings in the grips. Something you might immediately notice is that the grips are actually kind of wearing away, which is a bit of a bizarre reversal of the real steel in terms of materials, because we've got, or at least a reversal of what you'd normally expect on an airsoft gun or a real gun. You've got a plastic frame and slide, heavyweight plastic, very nice plastic, combined with very heavy cast metal grips, which is a little odd. Obviously most guns, like uh, go back to that 229, you expect frame and slide to be metal, combined with plastic grips. That's kind of the standard setup on a metal handgun like that. But yeah, they've decided to add some weight to it with these metal grips. It's possible that the real one comes with metal grips. I've never handled or seen a real one up close, so I couldn't tell you if these are actually metal on the real one, but uh, yeah, interesting choice there, and it makes the gun quite heavy overall. So the gun weighs 602 grams, which is quite impressive because a real one unloaded weighs about 660 grams, and that is of course a full steel gun. So for a plastic gun, that's very impressive. And out of that, the magazine accounts for 119 grams, which actually makes it a little bit lighter than the tiny little uh, Glock 42 magazines. So all of that weight, combined with a very small gun, makes for an incredibly solid feeling little handgun. The way that the heavyweight plastic, which has metal blended in with it, is actually sort of cold to the touch. When I first pulled this out of the package, I knew that it was plastic, but it kind of made me think, is it really? It was a uh, so dense and heavy feeling and cold, I really thought maybe they'd scam me and sent me a metal clone instead. Um, which there have been a few made, I believe. You don't see them very often. I think it was Warshan or someone like that. Or what are they called? Hashan? One of those sort of um, lesser known Taiwanese companies. I did make a metal clone of this. Someone actually made a metal clone that had a uh, CO2 bulb that you just screw into the bottom of the gun, hangs out the bottom. But um, yeah, you don't see those very often. You see these Western Arms originals more often. Anyway, have a look at some of the details on it. So you can see good finish on the plastic. Something that you often get with heavyweight plastic over time is this kind of pitting effect, as you can see. A lot of Western Arms that I've bought have this. You can actually kind of scrape it off. So you can see it's coming off of my nail there. Uh, it's kind of where it starts to bubble a little bit. I'm not sure exactly why. Possibly it reacts with people's hands and goes like that. But on an older gun like this, it's not a huge problem. What's more of an issue I find is the grips that are metal and painted, and they wear away very easily. I've, I have tried repainting these, uh, or at least retouching them up. Tried touching them up with um, Birchwood Casey Aluminium Black, which turns it black, but as soon as you start to rub it, it comes back off again. So that's a bit of, a bit of a problem, but I suppose some people don't mind since it is an older gun. Got our single action trigger here. Very light little trigger. And we've got a trigger bar that you can actually see move underneath the grip here. Very interesting little mechanism this gun has. Very nice smooth trigger, same with the hammer. Very precise and smooth feeling. Feels very well built overall. Everything's very crisp. As I mentioned, the frame and the slide are indeed heavyweight plastic, which means that there isn't much mass moving. The recoil spring is very light as well, so there isn't much going on here. 
uh, in terms of recoil when you're shooting. It's all very linear and sort of smooth. Despite its size, it is a fully functioning gas blowback pistol, just like the Glock 42. This one has a nozzle that does retract quite fully, so you've got a nice big open ejection port there. You can see all the way through. Got the characteristic Beretta open slide design. Something very interesting about this particular example is that the barrel, outer barrel that is, is actually metal. So I'm not sure if this is something that the previous owner has done, possibly swap parts with one of those clones I was talking about. But the clones are quite rare, so to, to buy one just to fit the metal barrel to, to a plastic gun, it's a little odd. So I, I would assume that they actually came with a metal barrel standard. You can see where there's a little bit of wear on it. Hopefully someone else that owns this gun can tell me whether these come with metal metal barrels. I assumed they were plastic, but after owning this, it seems like they could come with metal ones. So that's interesting. Got your inner barrel there, which doesn't seem quite centred, right? Find, find it's like that on some guns. So in terms of operation, it's quite a, an interesting little pistol. As I said, it is single action. Quite a light little trigger pull there. The safety is definitely an interesting element of this gun. It turns 180 degrees like that. So with the red showing, you're ready to fire. Swap it over and it blocks the uh, trigger bar as you'd expect. So nothing too, too interesting there. Normally this kind of safety would be quite frustrating as you might have to use your other hand, but because this gun is so small, you can usually flick it with your thumb. Something that uh, the gun being so tiny definitely helps with. Sprung quite nicely, feels good. It's actually connected to the recoil rod. That's what's providing the force for it to click into place. Now the end, it gets interesting when you put it on safe and try and rack the gun. Which leaves you with this strange situation here, which you wouldn't really encounter on any other gun. And this is actually also the disassembly latch. So when it's in the safe position and you cock it, it locks back and the barrel is free to slide out of the gun. Very interesting. Again, you can see the barrel is metal here. We've got an aluminium inner barrel, interestingly, rather than brass. And there is a little hop-up nub in there, but it's not adjustable, so you've got a fixed hop-up on this gun. So now you're left with the gun in this state, and you can push that down. Slide comes off. And we have a metal recoil rod. Slightly rusty recoil spring there, quite a long one. Decent amount of um, force put out by it, but for whatever reason the slide just doesn't have much momentum when it's moving. And then we have an incredibly simple slide layout here. We've got a little metal plug for the recoil rod. And we've got a metal unit here with the recoil unit, the blowback unit, and that's all held in by friction. You have to pry the slide apart a little bit and that just pops out. So if we have a look over the slide, it is indeed all plastic, I'll mention again. Quite a few markings on it. The markings aren't quite as crisp and deep as I would like. They're kind of rounded and, I don't know, they don't look great. Although I suppose it looks pretty similar to the real one, so I shouldn't complain. Got these slide serrations, which are actually cut in a sort of semicircular motion. Almost like a little round saw blade has gone in and done them. So quite interesting profile to those. You can feel it when you're manipulating the gun that they've got kind of a rounded profile. Got an extractor here, which is a moulded in piece by the looks of it. Don't think that's removable. And we've got our metal rear sight blade here. Combined with a moulded in, sorry about the focus, there we go, a moulded in plastic front sight. Try and give you an idea of the uh, sight picture, which on a lot of these old guns is pretty poor. Alright, there you go. Very small sights, something more modern, like the Glock, is obviously much easier to acquire with that dot. But you just have to expect that from a design this old. Right, so if we have a look at the frame now with the gun disassembled, without the recoil uh, spring in there, this is just a totally loose piece which can fall out. You can see the mechanism here. Quite dense and thick metal here used. Unlike in the Glock 42, when every, everything's very thin and not quite weak feeling, but um, this definitely seems very solid and well built. Very simple mechanism. 
very similar to most Western arms. Something very interesting about the operation here, which I've read about online, I didn't quite understand until I actually got the gun, is that it has something called the hammer transfer system. So you can effectively lower the hammer without releasing any gas, which I didn't quite understand because when I read that, I thought that any pistol can do that. You know, if you get a TM1911, or maybe not 1911 because you've got the half cock, but if you've got something and slowly release the hammer, then it shouldn't release any gas. The only problem when you do that on a normal gun is that the hammer is then resting on the valve, and if you were to hit the hammer or drop it, it would fire. But what this gun actually does, somehow, when you release the hammer slowly, it misses the valve. As you can see there, the, the valve knocker jumps over the valve, and it totally decocks the hammer without firing anything, and now this is totally inert, there's no way of it shooting. So that's actually a really useful little system, because obviously there's no decocker on this gun, if you don't feel like shooting, you can just lower the hammer and it's totally safe. So very clever little mechanism there actually. If I try and do that on something like, um, see if it'll work on this. There we go, so now the hammer's down but it's resting on the magazine. The way you can test that is remove the magazine and see if the hammer drops. See the, how the hammer moved forward there? If I was to hit this it would shoot the gun because it's actually resting on the valve which you don't want. So yeah, very clever little mechanism in the Beretta here. I'm just going to put it back together and uh, talk about a few more features. I thought it would probably be a good idea to show you actually how to put it back together because it's a little, little different to most guns. What you want to do is put the guide rod through the slide, push it through and hold it in place, which might be a little bit, uh, might be a little bit greasy, but you want to hold that in the forward position like that. You can then make sure that your uh, disassembly safety lever is properly seated in the frame because it can move loosely. Now we just put the two together, slowly guide the recoil rod back where it should go. And if it all goes back together properly, the slide should automatically lock. And then we can just drop our barrel back in. Make sure it's uh, seated in the rails inside. And there we are, back together. So it's a little bit counterintuitive to uh, put a gun on safe and then you might want to clear it or something and everything kind of moves. So you can see there the barrel actually comes back with it. So it's a little a little odd to try and get used to. So uh, what something that you couldn't really do is um, lock the slide back to chamber around. I, I suppose you could put your magazine in and then do that but you have the risk when the magazine is out that the barrel is loose and it could fall out. So um, I'd refrain from locking it back like that, you know, when you don't need to. Although I suppose what you can do is uh, put the magazine in and then it locks the barrel in place and then you could just use it as a slide lock. But the gun does not lock open when the slide, uh, when the magazine is empty. As you can see here, there's nothing that would, that would uh, react with that empty magazine to make it do that. Every time you pull the slide, that will lock back in that position. So you don't treat it like a slide lock. Speaking of the magazine, it's reasonably long if I compare it to this Beretta 19, not a 19, Beretta Model 84. It's actually about the same length, it's just thinner because it's a single stack. And like most airsoft guns with a single stack magazine, it does pose some issues in terms of gas capacity. I've just been using my usual 01 Pro Gas, which is the same as Abbey Ultra. So you can see it's got one of the uh, Japanese fill valves that sprays gas everywhere and everything, but uh, they normally work all right. Definitely means you get a good fill um, rather than trapping air inside it. Magazine is all metal, including this funny looking base plate. For someone like me with small hands, I don't actually need that extra lip. Uh, I suppose it's all, you know, helps a little bit. But I find it quite ugly. I was kind of tempted to buy another one of these magazines if I could find it and take it into work and mill that lip off and see what it would be like with a little flat magazine base. I think that would look quite cool. But uh, for the sake of sort of realism and whatever, I've, I've just kept this one on there. The magazine's taken quite a lot of wear over its years of use. This area here is normally cut out on the real one so you can actually see the rounds inside. I believe it's a seven round magazine. 
of 9mm shot on the real one. And we've got our usual Western Arms sort of funny system of having a little plate that slides over the valve. So it's all a little slightly different to the way TM works. Uh, the magazine capacity is quite good though for its size. I'm going to do a little test here. I'm not sure if I've actually tried to fully load this one before. But uh, I'll do that for you now. Right, one, two, three. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Right, I thought you didn't need to watch all of that. But I've squeezed 20 rounds in here, which for the size of the magazine is actually very impressive. The uh, WE Beretta 84, which is a double stack, similar length, I believe only holds about 20 as well. So obviously we've got a double stack configuration, despite the magazine being a single stack design in real life. The spring tension was getting a little strong towards the end here. You might be able to squeeze one more, but I don't think it fits into the gun very well. So when you, when you want to hold the slide open, you really have to do it just with your thumb or something, because if you do it with that back, the barrel's going to fall out. So hold it back, see if this goes in all right. So you can see, I quite like that open top design. You can see everything that's going on. Like I said, it is a fixed top up though, so no adjustment anywhere. All right, so that would leave 19 in the magazine and one in the chamber. You can add one more to that to make it a 20 round, 21 round total magazine capacity. So we've got 21 rounds loaded in this gun as opposed to the 15 I managed to squeeze into the little Glock. The little Glock managed to just about shoot all of them out. It was starting to misfeed a little bit towards the end. I'm not sure whether that was because, um, I think probably because the gas was running a little bit low, it was getting a bit cold. Unfortunately, I've had a pretty poor record of this gun with how many shots I've actually been able to get off. There's absolutely no way I could see you getting this many shots out. What I'll do is I'll uh, make sure it's full of gas. Again, I'm using 01 Pro Gas, which is a mid-powered gas, good for these kind of guns. All right, that's full. I'll set up a little target and we'll see how many we can actually shoot off. But um, expect to be disappointed because the magazine is very thin. It's not a very efficient gun and I've only really been able to get off about half a magazine in my testing in the past. Pretty poor lighting everywhere, so I'm just going to shoot into something soft here. Hopefully I won't smash a window or anything. Right, so here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's what you'll be able to shoot with the real one. Kick is already starting to uh, weaken a little bit. I can feel the magazine getting cold. There isn't much kick to the gun, as you can probably see. Uh, the slide is so light and the recoil spring is quite weak, so you really don't feel much, but it's quite quick, I suppose, so at least it's got that going for it. Uh, but as I said, the kick's really starting to weaken. And there we are. So I've probably got oh, about 10 there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Yeah, so I managed to fire about 10 shots with decent power, and then the last one just sort of flopped out of the barrel. Overall, there's the possibility that this gas is actually too much for it. Sometimes you find that more powerful gases are detrimental to the efficiency of guns. Sometimes it actually, you actually need to use a lower powered gas and it manages to make it last a bit longer. But uh, yeah, 10 shots and it's pretty much useless. Now the magazine is very cold. A little bit disappointing. Most Western arms I've used in the past have had bit more of a satisfying kick but I suppose it's something that you just have to accept with a gun this tiny and realistically you're probably not going to buy this to uh, actually use as a skirmish gun. I don't have a chronograph but sorry about that my cat bothering me again. Yeah I highly doubt this is um, going to be putting out anything over 200 fps certainly compared to the excellent Glock 42 it's less efficient it's weaker less recoil Obviously I'm using a more powerful gas in this gun, but I haven't been able to use anything more powerful in this simply because the hammer spring doesn't work with anything more powerful. It's all quite uh, loosely sprung and combined with that plastic slide, I wouldn't want to use anything more powerful than this and I think the efficiency would be even worse. So it's definitely not a gun for somebody that likes to do <laughs> much shooting or it's definitely not for someone that wants to take it airsofting, but you probably knew that. 
uh, if you were looking at buying one of these just because of the age of the design you've got that magazine heel release which uh, takes a bit of getting used to magazines aren't easy to find so that's something you've got to take into account when you're buying an airsoft gun uh, it's a little bit awkward to use due to its size and those poor sights so really it's a it's a collectible if you want something really tiny that's genuinely very fun and uh, usable then I still totally recommend the Glock 42 not that I would have changed my opinion in the last couple of hours but I'm very impressed how good this gun is this gun is very nicely detailed very well built of course as, as any Western Arms is but yeah I was a little disappointed when I actually came to shooting uh, just what this is actually capable of it's quite poor really so there we go more reviews are indeed on the way a couple of more common pistols slightly more boring stuff possibly <laughs> we sig 26 which I, i've actually found quite impressive cybergun uh vfc all that who uh, have all those people who made it the fnx i'm going to be reviewing that soon so once again thank you for watching hope you enjoyed the video